This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesis in 101, where you want to quit every other day. In the series, we cover tips and tricks to help you on your research journey. To returning viewers, thank you for your continued support. To first-time viewers, welcome. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Today's focus is on research design purpose. Let's get right into it. As a reminder, a research design is a blueprint for conducting research. It is a plan we create to collect what we need in the most efficient and cheapest way. In our previous tutorials, we spoke about philosophies and its associated assumptions and delimitations. We also focused on deductive, inductive, abductive, and retroductive research approaches or inferential logics. Today, we are going to explore the different research purposes or research types. There are three research types, namely exploratory, descriptive, and explanatory. It is very common for studies to have elements of more than one research type present. However, you will have a dominant research type. So let's check out the characteristics of each of these. Let's start with exploratory. For this type of research, think of yourself as Dora the Explorer, as in you are exploring a phenomenon. All you want to do is to get a basic understanding of a new phenomenon, or you want to see an existing phenomenon in a new light. In an exploratory study, we're not interested in definitively defining every aspect of the phenomenon. I mean, that could take decades to achieve. See, the aim of research is to contribute to knowledge, but this contribution is done bit by bit. And this bit by bit starts with exploratory research, as in it starts with the basics. There are three main ways we can go about figuring out the basics, as in searching for literature, interviewing experts on the subject, and or conducting focus group discussions. Usually, in an exploratory study, your research question may start with the word, what? If you have ever been around a toddler, you'll know this is one of the first series of questions that they ask. What is this? What is that? What are you eating? They explore stuff. Let's look at an example of exploratory research. There is a new phenomenon called the digital business strategy. We don't know much about it, but we've given it a name and we are probing around to see what pops out. So what Dora did in her exploratory research was to answer the what is a digital business strategy question. Through her exploration, she highlighted that the DBS has four main variables, namely scope, scale, speed, and value creation. She gives a brief description of what she thinks each variable is, but she makes sure that researchers who reads her published work understands that there is more work to be done. This is where descriptive studies kicks in. It is very important to note that descriptive studies build on exploratory studies. Before we define the descriptive research type, let's look at the golden nuggets Dora left us in the exploratory study. Through exploratory research, Dora did some preliminary work and she was kind enough to mark the spot where future researchers should be focusing. So the exploratory researcher tells the descriptive researcher where to investigate. So what does it mean for the descriptive researcher to investigate? A descriptive study allows the researcher to describe the characteristics of a phenomenon. It also allows you to describe the relationships between the variables supporting the phenomenon. For instance, here is the result of our exploratory study. As the descriptive researcher, you can now say, I would like to describe the scope of a digital business strategy. And I would also like to describe the relationship between the scope of a DBS and other variables of the DBS. Another researcher may say, I would like to do it on speed, another on scale, etc. The point is, if it wasn't for the exploratory research that Dora did, you would not have known that these variables should be investigated in the first place. Usually in a descriptive study, your research question may start with the word how, but, and this is very important, not the words how to. How to is answering a practical life question, not a typical research question. By no means am I saying that your research cannot have practical implications or practical contributions. I'm saying in general we don't have practical how-to research questions. What you can do is add how-to's to your research purpose. So how questions belongs in your problem statement and how-to belongs in your purpose statement. In a descriptive study, you can collect qualitative and or quantitative data. Now, the descriptive research type at times may be a forerunner to other exploratory studies, but is mostly a forerunner to explanatory research. Now, let's focus on explanatory research. Explanatory research aims to offer the researcher a platform to explain the causes of the phenomenon or to explain the phenomenon itself. In order to do that, in an explanatory study, your research question may start with the word, why? You are trying to explain why things are the way they are, how they work. 
So going back to our example, we have identified where X marks the spot, we've described the spot, now we need to explain the spot. Meaning, in the exploratory research, we identify that scope, scale, speed, and value creation of the DBS should be investigated. In the descriptive study, we describe the scope, scale, speed, and value creation of a DBS. And we also describe the relationships between the variables. But it is very important to know that describing that there is a relationship does not mean you are explaining why the relationship exists. This is where the explanatory study comes in. We are explaining the causal relationships between scope, scale, speed, and value creation. And we may very well be explaining the DBS itself. That's all for me today. If you have a question, please add it to the comment section. Like this, share this, subscribe to this. This is Dr. J signing off.